The physics of how a stretched slinky spring falls is really fascinating, counterintuitive, and just downright bizarre. It's also been well documented on YouTube already, so this is not just another one of those videos. I want to add something new to the conversation, something that I don't think has been addressed yet on YouTube, at least not that I could find. But before I show you the new piece, let me show you what's already out there, in case you missed it. Here's a particularly good video that I found on YouTube showing the fall of a slinky in slow motion. This clip was taken by Adam Shomsky. I reached out to Adam and he gave me permission to use this clip in my video, so thank you very much, Adam. I put a link to his original video in the description below. Have a look what happens when the slinky falls when I press play. Here we go. All right, so he lets go. It falls. The top end is definitely falling down, but have a look at the bottom. It's basically frozen there until the top end catches up to it, at which point the whole slinky falls down. Like I said, that has been shown numerous times on YouTube, and it's been talked about, so I don't want to really focus on the bottom of the slinky. In fact, what I want to do is turn our attention over to the top of the slinky. In particular, I want to analyze the motion of how the top end precisely moves in its downward fall. Have a look at it again, because what I really want to focus on is the acceleration of just the top end after it's let go. Play this through one more time. What is the acceleration of the top end? That's basically my question. So to better understand and visualize the acceleration of the top end of the falling slinky, consider an acceleration time graph. Now, in my graph, I'm using downwards as the negative, and uh, presented three possible choices here to consider here. In all three cases, I've got a downwards acceleration because clearly the top end is accelerating downwards. So possibility number one is maybe the acceleration is that of free fall, G, the whole time. Just a constant acceleration because it's just falling, perhaps. Possibility number two I've marked here in green, maybe it starts with an acceleration that is considerably faster than G in the downward direction, and that acceleration reduces until it is that of a free falling object. Possibility number three is maybe a bit more interesting. Maybe the acceleration starts off extreme, like option number two, but that acceleration reduces until it is actually accelerating downwards less than that of free fall before coming back down to free fall. Stop for a moment and consider these three possibilities and which one you think is the most accurate or if you think it's something else. So what does the acceleration most look like? Well, sorry, but none of these three do a very good job of it. Also, I lied to you earlier when I told you it was for sure going to be in the negative. Because that's the crazy part. The acceleration is actually upwards for a portion of the fall. That's pretty crazy, but let me sketch it out for you more or less what it looks like. Something like that. Okay, so how can we wrap our heads around the fact that the top of the slinky is accelerating upwards for a significant portion of its fall downwards? It just doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, and, and yet, it is the truth. I promise you, I'm not making this up. So I built a model in interactive physics to try to help me make sense of this. Uh, my model of a slinky is not fully realistic, of course. My model consists of basically point masses. These blue rectangles are kind of sort of representing each coil, but they are point masses, and they're connected by idealized massless springs. Interactive physics can only have massless idealized springs here, so this is the best model that I could come up with, at least. Now, let me show you how my model runs when I press run. It, um, it basically falls similarly to the real-life slinky. The top end is very much accelerating. Uh, the bottom is still being supported by tension above it, so it doesn't fall at all until that compression pulse basically reaches the bottom and the whole thing falls. So in this regard, it, it looks quite good. It's, it's a pretty good match for uh, what we saw in the real-life slow-motion video. It basically works. I've added a velocity time graph for the top rectangle in my simulation, representing the top of the slinky. Now, in case you're rusty, a velocity time graph does show acceleration as the slope. So if a graph slopes down to the right, that would be indicative of a negative acceleration, it's accelerating down. And if the graph slopes up to the right, that would be indicative of a positive acceleration, upwards in this case. So let me just press run here. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to pause it before it gets too far here. So here we go, just for the first little bit here, go. And I'm just going to hit pause. So what's been happening for the first very, very, very short little bit of time here is the, uh, the velocity is in the negative, which means it's going downwards, and it's going faster and faster and faster and faster. This is a downward acceleration, and this part makes sense. I mean, it's, it's accelerating downwards. In fact, it's accelerating downwards really, really quickly because it has a downward force of gravity, and it also has a spring, my idealized little spring, pulling it down. Of course, the real-life slinky should behave similarly. The top coil has tension pulling it downwards and also a force of gravity, so that thing's going to accelerate down for sure. But I'm going to continue this. Watch what happens from this point on. Okay, so in my model, the blocks start colliding with each other, representing coil-on-coil -coil contact. 
And have a look at this velocity time graph. It has a kind of a stair step shape to it. That's because of my distinct blocks hitting each other. But look at the trend line here. The trend line is an upwards slope. And that is indicative of that upward acceleration that I was talking about. Once all the coils are compressed, it then has a nice constant acceleration due to gravity. All right, so seeing the graph is one thing, but really wrapping your head around it is something else. So to help make sense of it, I've added two small balls. Now, these two balls are not attached to each other. They're not attached to the spring. They're just free falling objects in the simulation. So they're going to have an acceleration that of g in the downward direction. Now, I'm going to press run to watch this slinky fall again, and noticeably I want to point something out at this moment in time, at the start of the simulation. The velocity of the top of the slinky is zero, as is the velocity of each of these two balls. I'm going to press run, and I'm going to interrupt it very quickly, so maybe about now. All right, so what's happened in the very first little bit of time? Something that makes a lot of sense, I think. The top of the slinky has gone down further than the ball in free fall in the same amount of time. They both started from rest. So clearly, the top of the slinky is going very fast, and it had a higher acceleration than free fall. That's the easy part. But here's the more interesting part, to me, the mind-blowing part. If I continue to run the simulation, watch what happens. And again, I want to point out that so far, around this point, the top of the slinky is definitely going faster than this ball, and therefore also faster than this ball. The speed of the top of the slinky is high right now. I'm going to continue the simulation. And uh, I'm going to let it go all the way up into the point where the slinky is fully compressed. Don't forget that w when I had it stopped a moment ago, the top of the slinky was going extra fast. And here we go. I'm going to stop it again there. Clearly, the whole slinky is falling in free fall now that it's fully compressed. And the top of the slinky, indeed the whole slinky, is falling at the exact same speed as this ball. Well, and also this ball. But think about what that means. That means that the top of the slinky, which was previously going faster than the free-falling balls, and is now only going as fast as the free-falling balls, has slowed down. To me, that's crazy. The top of the slinky has slowed down for a significant part of its fall. All right, so if you're really on your toes, you might be quick to point out a flaw in my logic so far. Uh, I kind of lied. Uh, it's actually not quite true that it's required that the top of the slinky have an upward acceleration throughout this motion. It's possible that the acceleration just reduced to be less than g, and therefore the two velocities could equalize as this one just sped up at a faster rate. Maybe the simulation is lying to us. Uh, the, the acceleration is not necessarily upwards in the real world. Well, I tested for that. Uh, in fact, what I did was I took my own video of a falling slinky. Let me show that to you real quickly. Got that right here. All right, so what I've got here is, uh, oh, there it is, a slinky. Uh, I suspended my slinky up on a fishing line, and I brought in a blowtorch. Uh, the blowtorch I used to melt the fishing line. The uh, reason I did that, in case you're curious, is because I found that dropping it by my hand uh, was too unstable. The top kind of went sideways every time I dropped it. So I figured that uh, melting a, a fishing line supporting it would be nicer in terms of a drop, and it actually was. Uh, I'll play the video for you, but it happens really quickly. You'll see it better frame by frame right away. All right. There we go. And uh, as promised, let me show you the frame by frame, which I have here. So uh, this is Logger Pro. I used it to analyze the motion. I actually marked the position of the very top of the slinky, at least the center point, uh, in each frame. So here it is uh, frame by frame for you. Uh, there it is, frame by frame. I marked the position, as you can see, the little blue dots indicating the position within each frame. And I did an analysis of that, in fact, graphed it. So let me hide this video. Move to back, there it is. Uh, here's the position time data. It doesn't really look like much. The, the curvature is very subtle here. Uh, so let me switch over to the velocity time graph. And here it is. Uh, that actually matches up quite nicely with uh, what I just showed you. And again, this is real world fall of a slinky. So as, uh, as expected, the, the acceleration is very, very steep in the negative here, a very high acceleration in the downward direction. But have a look at what happens. That acceleration, as visualized by slope here on this velocity time graph, kind of levels out. It uh, looks like it's approximately zero for a little while. And then here it is, to me the mind-blowing part. The velocity time graph reveals a slowing down of the top of the slinky. It's still moving downwards, so remember that this upward slope here is not showing that it moved upwards, but rather just that it slowed down. The velocity is getting closer and closer to zero, which is up there not quite on this graph at the scale we're looking at it. 
the slinky became fully compressed at this point, at which point it resumes a downward acceleration of about 9.8 meters per second squared. In fact, here is the acceleration time graph to make it even more clear. A very high negative acceleration, which then reduces to near zero for a short while, a positive acceleration through a significant portion of its fall until it's fully collapsed, at which point it then just falls in free fall. So I hope that I've convinced you kinematically that the top of the slinky definitely accelerates upwards for a portion of its downwards fall. But how does that make sense in terms of forces? It seems impossible, and for me, this is the fascinating part. To provide an upward acceleration, you have to have a net upward force. So what the heck is providing that upward force on the top of our slinky? It doesn't seem like there's anything there pushing it up. Force of gravity is definitely down, there's tension in the, in, the, in the slinky still pulling it down throughout the whole fall, so what's providing the net upward force to accelerate it upwards? Well, in my model of individual coils, I think it's pretty clear. Every time that a coil smacks into the coil below it, it pushes that lower coil downwards. And as it pushes the lower coil downwards, Newton's third law would remind us that that lower coil has to push back on the upper coil exactly at the same size force in the upwards direction. Now again, this is just my model of you know, individual unique coils represented as point masses. But I think that the same thing can be said about the real life slinky. It's just a little bit more complicated because it's not you know, so easy to see the point masses. The higher portion of the slinky does have to push the lower portion down to get it up to speed, so to speak. And that means that the lower portion of the coil has to push back just as hard. That's what's providing the net upward force to provide the net upwards acceleration. So there you have it. The top of the slinky accelerates upwards for a portion of its fall downwards. I have to admit that what's going on at the bottom end of the slinky is visually more freaky. But to think about the top accelerating upwards, to me, is completely mind-blowing. Maybe you have to be a real physics nerd to really appreciate that, but I, I plead guilty to that charge hands down. So I found it neat, and I hope you did too.